Hi everyone, what if I told you there's a chance, although small, that a massive amount of water could flood downtown Denver? We're talking a water height of over 50 feet crashing through the area. Well, again, this is a very real possibility, and I'm going to go through this scenario and how it could develop and what are the technical details behind all of this. So it turns out that this flood hazard comes from the possible overtopping and failure of Cherry Creek Dam. This dam was built in the late 40s and the dam and reservoir went into operation in 1950. So this dam's been in operation for 74 years as of this recording. So most flood control structures like this, these dams were built for a total lifespan of around 100 years, although that undoubtedly will be extended through ongoing and intensive maintenance. The fact is these are, dams are getting quite old, but the flood hazard isn't coming just from the age of the structure. If the dam were to fill up rapidly so that water was coming into the reservoir faster than it could be safely released through the dam, eventually the height of the water in the reservoir is going to increase to the point where it flows over the earthen embankment. And, of course, the embankment wasn't designed to have overflow or to be overtopped like this. So the result would be erosion, scour, and eventually a large enough opening would be created at the downstream face of the dam, which would connect further upstream and into the reservoir itself, such that a catastrophic release of water would occur. And you can see from this graphic, a few hours after such an event, a wall of water 50 feet high would be crashing through downtown Denver, Colorado. Now, I used to work for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the Omaha District is responsible for the construction and operation for Cherry Creek Dam and Reservoir. So I worked for the Corps back in the late 80s, and I had occasion to perform inspections at Cherry Creek. So the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers estimates that as many as 13,000 people could be killed as a result of dam overtopping of Cherry Creek. And they also estimate somewhere in the order of $13 billion in property damage, although I can tell you that seems quite low on both counts. So how do engineers figure out how big a reservoir needs to be and whether it can safely hold the amount of water that could occur from a flood without causing ma massive problems such as overtopping? To put this in perspective, there was a rain event that occurred back in 2013 that resulted in significant rainfall and flooding along the Front Range. So the probable maximum flood at Cherry Creek Reservoir and Dam would be somewhere on the order of twice what occurred back in 2013. Now, the 2013 rainfall and flood event was estimated to be a 1 in 500 or a 1 in 1,000 type event. So you would expect at any given year there's one chance out of 500 or one chance out of 1,000 that could occur. But of course, as we've seen, what used to be considered extreme and rare events seem to be occurring more often these days. So if we go back to this 2013 event, lasted seven or eight days here, and the total rainfall was 18.1 inches in this period of time. So let's look at this rainfall event in 2013 as it unfolded. So the blue is just around an inch, inch green's inch and a half. You can see this time lapse. The rainfall totals are going to increase over this week period. So we're getting more and more areas with two inch totals. Now we're seeing three inch totals in the, in the violet. The blue's getting into four inch totals. Yellow's six, red's eight. So we see some eight inch totals occurring here. And we continue on and it's just a, a massive amount of water for this area to handle in a short period of time. So as I mentioned, this dam was constructed in the late forties this area of Denver experienced a massive flood along Cherry Creek back in 1933. Here's some pictures of what that looked like. Here's some photos in the aftermath of this 1933 flood event. You can see in downtown Denver, this is Wazi Street. You see the debris, the mud that coats the streets, the remnants of trees that washed down the channel. So this area here, like I said, Wazi Street, downtown Denver, is what it looks like today. And of course, there's nearly 100 years that elapsed since this 1933 flood event. So the number of people living in the area, the amount of development has increased several orders of magnitude above what was present in 1933. So let's go back to look at this area of Cherry Creek Dam and Reservoir. So we're about 18 miles south of downtown Denver. There's a, a development called Cherry Creek that's midway really between the dam and downtown Denver. 
and you can see it's highly developed. So if downtown Denver would get a wall of water 50 foot tall running through uh, the area, you can imagine that that water height would be even greater at the midpoint. So even if you just set it at 50 feet, the same as downtown, you can see downtown off in the distance, it's a massive amount of water. And so the Corps of Engineers estimate of 10 to 13,000 people killed in the event of the overtopping of Cherry Creek Dam seems to me to be rather low because I understand approximately two to 300,000 people live in this area that would be impacted. Now, Cherry Creek Dam is one of three reservoirs that provide upstream protection for flood control relative to the South Platte River, which runs through downtown Denver. But Cherry Creek uh, Dam has the greatest hazard associated with it. So let's look at a couple of definitions. I've mentioned already probable maximum flood. It's the maximum flood that could actually occur as a result of the PMP or the probable maximum precipitation. For Cherry Creek, the PMP, which would produce the PMF, is 24.7 inches of rainfall over a 72 hour period. So the type of extreme event that you'd be looking at is a low pressure weather system that rests for many days along the eastern flank of the Rockies, the front range, and reacts with warm moist air to the north and just produces torrential amounts of rainfall. So the probable maximum flood that would result at Cherry Creek as a result of that 24.7 inches of rainfall in 72 hours is a volume of water over 545,000 cubic feet. This volume of water would occupy an area of over 324 acres at a one foot depth. So this is the drainage basin, and this is how the probable maximum flood is computed. There's a lot that goes into these hydrologic studies, but you have to start out first by defining what the basin is, what its area is. So the idea of the drainage basin is that any water that falls as rain and falls within the boundary of this drainage basin would flow into Cherry Creek. Now things that affect how much water would actually flow into Cherry Creek include obviously the rainfall, but also how much water would infiltrate into the soil. And of course, after an inch or two of rain, this, the soils usually become saturated. So any new rainfall that lands in the drainage basin is going to run off. And of course, things that increase the rate of runoff include a lot of hard surfaces, roads, parking lots, buildings, all these things uh, guarantee that the water runs off rather than percolates into the soil. So here's a, a look at the embankment here. It has a structural height, so a height from the stream bed to the crest or top of the dam of 141 feet. You see this little bridge here from the crest out to the outlet works tower. The outlet works is basically a tunnel with a gate and they're able to open and close the gate to regulate the amount of flow in a controlled fashion that goes through the dam. This is the primary way that the water level in the reservoir is regulated. This is the downstream view at the outlet works location. Now, just off to the left in this photo here is where the emergency or principal spillway is located. So, so if the reservoir rises to a great enough height, the water will flow into this man-made channel and the maximum flow rate in that channel is estimated to be around 30,000 cubic feet per second. And unfortunately, you know, this spillway would discharge directly into a residential subdivision. You know, when the Corps of Engineers built this dam in the 40s, it was just cow pasture. And the federal government owns the land around Cherry Creek and the reservoir, but they don't own uh, all the property. So eventually you get private property that's been developed there was, I don't think, enough coordination about where the spillway flow could occur to keep buildings out of that area. That's common with flood control projects. That, in essence, they provide flood protection. I mean, you saw those pictures from 1933 in downtown Denver. And no doubt the Cherry Creek Dam, since it's been in operation since 1950, has provided protection for avoiding numerous floods that otherwise would have occurred. But the ironic aspect of flood control structures is that they tend to concentrate and elevate the overall hazard, but at a lower chance of occurrence. So originally that outlet work structure was designed to have as much as 5,000 cubic feet per second discharged through, through its uh, gate 
But recently, the Corps modified their operation to allow up to 7,000 cubic feet per second. So again, the more water you let out, the longer it's going to take for the reservoir height to get to unsafe levels. So that was a measure that was done to provide some greater protection relative to the risk of overtopping. However, running at 7,000 cubic feet per second would produce some amount of downstream flooding. So what could be done to provide greater protection? That even though this event of overtopping could be very low probability, the results would be catastrophic. I mean, if you're talking 10 to 13,000 deaths or even more, that would be the most catastrophic event in U.S. history. And Cherry Creek Reservoir isn't unique in this regard. There are many high hazard dams and levees throughout the United States. And many of these dams and levees are well over 60, 70 years in age. Well, for a number of years, the Corps of Engineers considered raising the crest of the dam anywhere from seven to 12 feet. They did an environmental impact study. And uh, in that study, they ultimately recommended doing nothing at this time. I think there was a lot of local opposition to raising the dam because of the impacts that it would occur to traffic to for people that live in that upstream area. And uh, it just didn't seem to have a lot of uh, political will to get something like that done. But again, these so-called extreme events seem to be happening more frequently. There's been predictions of increased number of hurricanes. In fact, that's one of the scenarios that the remnants of a hurricane could track up along the eastern flank of the Front Range and produce these massive rainfall totals that could lead to dam overtopping of Cherry Creek. So a little bit different uh, content today. I just ties back to my work starting out as an engineer right out of school in the late 80s. And it's interesting to see what happens on these projects decades after you had any involvement with them. But again, it's a reminder of the complex infrastructure system that we have in this country and the fact that it's aging and it may not really suit the design requirements of today versus the design requirements of decades ago. So all these things are brought together and ultimately it's a problem of engineering and it's a problem of policy as to what the priorities need to be in addressing these high hazards. So I wanna give a shout out to the channel members. It really helps me to maintain my production of approximately one new video a week. Also, I appreciate all of you watching and commenting on these videos and liking and subscribing. That's another way you can support this channel. Also, if you'd like a copy of my free digital download of the biggest civil engineering disasters of the last 100 years, check out the link in the description to this video. Thanks very much.